Hey guys, Superintendent Bob here, and I'm here for another Xgo tutorial for you today. Now, this tutorial is probably going to be one of my most simplest tutorials I've ever done, um, but the reason I'm doing it is because I get a lot of questions um, asked from many different YouTube users pretty much every day now, um, asking this same question. And basically what they're asking is, how can you uh, develop an iOS application um, on the latest version of Xcode, which also runs in an older iOS device, like, for example, how can you use Xcode 4 to develop for the iOS 3.0 platform? Um, so this is probably going to be more like a tip, because, I mean, it's just so simple, and it takes a few seconds. Um, there's going to be a few things I'm going to talk to you about, but apart from that, it's going to be pretty simple. So, let's open up Xcode and start a new project. I'm using the latest version of X Xcode. Uh, to date, this is Xcode 4.0.2. I'm going to start a view based application, call it test, whatever, save on the desktop. Okay, so in the latest version of Xcode, it's really simple um, to develop your application for older versions of iOS. Um, so simply click on your project here in the left hand side here, and on the right hand side, you'll get your .plist file. Um, or as well, this is technically the .plist file. It's just laid out nicer in Xcode 4. So now, under the tab which says iOS Application Target, we've got a few options, and one of them it says Deployment Target, and so this is going to be your minimum iOS requirement. So if you need multitasking, then you'll need to set it as 4.0 or higher. If multitasking isn't a necessity for your application, then you could either select the latest version of iOS or use an older version if you want to be more backwards compatible. So here, if you want to develop for older users using 3.0, for example, we could come here and select one of the versions of iOS 3.0. So I'm going to select 3.1 here. And there we go. So next time you build, and distribute your application on the App Store. In this case, anyone with iOS 3.1 on their device can now run uh, your iOS application. And then just one last thing I want to cover is that above it says devices. So here we can now select what devices um, can run our iOS application. So this can be iPhone. So if it's iPhone, any iPhone or iPod Touch with that minimum iOS requirement can run your application. If we select iPad, um, now I'm going to click no here, but if we were to select iPad, um, then any iOS device with iOS 4.3, which is an iPad, can run your application. And then finally, if we select Universal, any iOS device, which is an iPad, an iPod Touch, or an iPhone, with iOS 4.3 in this case, can run your application. So it's really simple to be more backwards compatible, um, even when using the latest version of Xcode. Now, the last thing I want to talk to you about is I've shown you how you can use this de deployment target feature here, so you can develop your iOS applications for older versions of iOS, um, iOS, dev you know, iOS devices using older versions of Apple's iOS operating system. Uh, but one last thing I do need to say is Obviously, as iOS has been updated more and more, and so has Xcode in the, you know, in the future and to date, um, code has changed from time to time, as highlighted in one of my Xcode tutorials, where I showed you how to load a video file in iOS 4.0. So basically, what I'm saying is, if you're the more backwards compatible you're going to get, the more careful you're going to be of your code that you're writing, okay? Because... Let's say you're new, you're a new iOS developer and you've just joined and you joined when Apple released iOS 4.0. So most of, most of the code you would know is generally going to be for 4.0 devices. Now, okay, some of it will work perfectly on older devices, but some of it won't. And my point being is that don't be surprised that when you change the, the you know the deployment target to an older version, that maybe there could be a possibility that some of your code won't work. And that's because that iOS version may not have support for that code, um, simply because those kind of features weren't around at the time when Apple developed that version of iOS. So just be careful about that. 
But in general, most things will work. So for example, you know, a UI alert view, UI web views, um, you know, playing a sound file, things like that. These kind of simple things will all work, but more advanced things might not. Okay, so you gotta be aware of your code. And remember, any point in time, if you're not sure if your code's gonna work with the iOS, with the version of iOS you are building for, simply search on Google. You know, and there's plenty of developers out there who use certain codes for certain versions of iOS devices. So you get plenty of help on Google or any search engine you use. All right, guys? Well, there we go. That's really simply how you can develop your iOS applications for older versions of iOS, even when using the latest version of Xcode. Um, if, if you've got any more questions about this kind of thing, um, then just send me a YouTube PM. Um, if you've guys, if you guys got any uh, suggestions for any kind of any more um, Xcode tutorials I can do, then please send them through as well. I'll be happy to do them. Um, uh, there we go. Oh yeah, one uh, one Xcode tutorial which has been requested quite a few times is how we can embed a YouTube video into an iPhone application, and I'm going to make an Xcode tutorial for that in the future. Uh, meanwhile, if you don't want to go you know, if you don't have the time to wait and, you know, you don't know how to do it, then one simple way would be just to implement a UI web view, which then loads the page with the YouTube video. Okay, but just make sure you load the mobile version of the YouTube website. Um, but yeah, so thank you very much for watching this video. I hope this video has answered everybody's questions or those of you who have emailed me or sent me YouTube PMs. Um, if it hasn't, then Sorry, then I hope, you know, I don't see how it hasn't because I've gone through everything really that you need to know. Um, but if it hasn't, then just send me an email and I'll talk to you about it in the email. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. And uh, stay tuned uh, to my YouTube channel for more great Xcode tutorials coming up in the future.